Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 31 of the Horizon series. As you just saw, we're going to do a burst test of the pressure chamber. We wanted to see what the upper burst limit is. But before we do that, we're going to have a look at some more details of the bracket uh, that's down here that holds the entire rocket down on the launch pad. Uh, and it also provides support for the sustainer while it's under acceleration. So there's a lot of load that goes on through that bracket. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at how that's attached to the booster segment. And then we're also gonna do a full on load test to see how that handles it. All right, so let's get started. We're going to start off by making another bracket to add to our previous prototype. This is needed because the brackets are not equally spaced around the central tube. This one's just made from 3mm G10 fiberglass, and the final one will be made out of carbon fiber plate. Here we've 3D printed a little jig to help align the bracket and set it at the right angle. We just tack it on with some super strength epoxy. We then need to reinforce that joint with five layers of 200 GSM fiberglass. We opted not to use carbon fiber here because it's a lot harder to get it to conform to the sharp edges. The fiberglass is plenty strong for our purposes here. Each of the layers alternates between 0 and 90 degrees orientation and a bias cut cloth for extra rigidity. We then compress those joints with these 3D printed tapered blocks that give the fiberglass enough room. They're covered in cling wrap to make it easy to release them after the epoxy cures. The rubber bands apply just the right amount of pressure on the joint. The next day we can remove them and the joint is really strong. Each of these single brackets needs to hold at least 100 kilograms when under full load. Next we need to attach the other side of this bracket to the pressure chamber but this would likely result in it putting too much concentrated load at either end of the bracket on the pressure chamber, which could cause it to fail. So we first attach the bracket to a load spreading mount. These mounts are made from the walls of the previous test pressure chambers. They happen to have the right curvature and are already reinforced with carbon fiber. Once they're shaped, we give them a good sand. Here we're beveling the brackets to give them a greater bonding surface area. Then we temporarily attach them to a tube, yet from another test pressure chamber, to get the right orientation, spacing, and more importantly, alignment. We tack the brackets onto these mounts with super strength epoxy again, and leave them overnight to cure. The next day we can add reinforcing to the joints and again we're using five layers of 200 GSM fiberglass with alternating weaves either side of the joint. To get the layers into the really acute angle, we first wet out the layers on a piece of baking paper that's been previously folded. We then take a piece of flat bar and bend the whole sandwich over the top of it. We then carefully slide it through the gap and use the flat bar to press it into the corner. We leave the baking paper in place until the epoxy cures. Then we can do the outer joints, which are much easier. When those are done, we apply a piece of baking paper over the top and squeeze out excess epoxy. This again gives the joint a nicer finish, much like peel ply. And here we are the next day with the joints trimmed and cleaned up. Because this is a prototype, we're not really wasting time sanding the joints nice and smooth. These brackets feel really strong when you squeeze them. The final version will have six brackets all the way around. Now it's time to attach the brackets to the pressure chamber. Doing the mounts this way means it will be a lot easier to join all the booster segments together rather than trying to apply fiberglass to the joints with the whole booster assembled. We prepare the bonding surfaces first by sanding them and then cleaning them with a brush and finally with some methylated spirits. To attach these mounts to the pressure chamber, we're just using super strength araldite epoxy. We don't intend to add any more fiberglass over the top of these joints. We let the whole thing cure overnight. 
Now we need to mount the bracket to the test frame. For this we are using a long bolt with some spacers to make sure the bolt goes down the middle of the tube. Then we drill some holes in the test frame to mount a couple of angle brackets. Now it's time to test the bracket under full load. We could have tested it simply by hanging a weight off it, uh, but it wouldn't test the forces on the fully pressurized booster segment. These are the loads on the bracket and chamber when pressurized. This arrangement causes this part of the bracket to want to pull away from the chamber, and this part wants to push into it. We're not only testing the bracket, but also if the stressed pressure chamber will survive. Yeah. We're filling the pressure chamber with water to prevent a large explosion should it break. We then mount the pressure chamber in the test frame. Mounting it sideways like this makes it easier to film. The entire pressure chamber is now only held by the bracket. The top of the pressure chamber slides over a short stub that is there to prevent the pressure chamber from flying off in case of failure. The chamber is free to slide back and forth on this so it provides no support against the pressure. Now it's time to prepare the test pressure gauges. We're hooking up the garden hose to an adapter that allows the high pressure hose to be filled with water. This reduces the amount of compressed air in the system. If we don't fill the hose with water, then as the pressure chamber expands and increases in volume, inevitably some air would flow into the pressure chamber. This way the water in the hose flows into the pressure chamber, reducing the chance of a large explosion. We let the water flow as we screw on the hose. Now we're ready to do the test. This is the fourth time this pressure chamber is going to be filled to 1000 psi, giving us further confidence in its ability to handle pressure cycles. For this test we're using the launcher's pressure gauges because those are calibrated and we have done all of our previous tests with them. We're again pressurizing it to the expected launch pressure of 1000 psi or 69 bar. We've set up a few cameras to look at the pressure chamber. Here we're toggling between 0 psi and 1000 psi to see what happens and how much the chamber stretches. Here's a view from another angle. We can see that there isn't anything obvious happening and the bracket and pressure chamber are holding up fine. There's no evidence of any delamination. Here is yet another view. Okay, that's it. It looks like a successful test. And now we can use this bracket construction technique on the actual flight hardware. For the burst test, we stopped holding down the pressure chamber by the bracket and again just supported the end of it. The hose and pressure chamber were again completely filled with water. couple of cameras that are going to be filming the gauges. Dad's over here with the scuba tank ready to pressurize. We've got some high pressure gauges that we'll be able to read and that feeds through a high pressure line that's full of water. Over here into the little cubby house pressure chambers hiding in there. We've got one GoPro down here, second GoPro up here. This camera is going to be back here behind the blast shield. So we are now ready to burst test this pressure chamber. Here we're out of the way and starting to pressurize. We can fill it quite quickly because there is little air volume in the system. 1000 1200 1400 
Here are a few slow-mo shots of the burst. You can see the chamber rotates 180 degrees as it bursts. The burst pressure was 110 bar or just a little over 1600 psi. That was eventful. <laughs> Time to inspect the failure. As you can see, the tear is the full length of the pressure chamber. In fact, this is the first time we've actually properly blown up a carbon fiber pressure chamber. There also weren't any large pieces that came off, which was good to see. That's a full length failure. Impressive. So there you have it. Uh, we're pretty happy with the 1600 PSI or 110 bar burst pressure. Uh, that gives us a safety factor of about 1.6. Now in practice, that's probably somewhat lower. Uh, we think it's probably closer to 1.3, uh, simply because this test doesn't take into account any compression heating or some of the dynamic loads that happen during launch. But we think that that's still high enough for us to be able to launch it at 1000 PSI. So anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.